Have your way. Have your way, God. Come on. 
Lord, just welcome him into your space right now. We lift our voice and say, Holy Spirit, you are. Just welcome him. Last time, everybody. Holy Spirit, say you're welcome. Here's Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome. Yeah. So we welcome you right now. Yes, we welcome. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness, man. I was just soaking that up, soaking it up. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Here in my heart, my soul, my life, my situation, circumstances, whatever I'm dealing with. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Man, come on now. How are y'all today? Happy Friday. Man, oh man, it's, it's the Lord's goodness, right? His mercy that we have not been consumed. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord God. He is faithful. His mercy, his, his loving kindness new every morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. What's up, Ramel, Felicia, Janice, Noel, Joanna, Carla, Tina. What's up? What's up? What's up, Francis? Happy Friday, man. I was just a sitting gal and just soaking up the presence of God. This has been a pretty good Chill morning. I slept late. I missed the prayer call this morning. I slept through the prayer call this morning. Evidently, my body didn't need it. I was been up four o'clock, four thirty throughout the literally since Monday. So I needed that extra hour of sleep, and it felt good to my body. And uh, just been kind of just um, sitting in a reflective introspective, um, just in a space of meditation all morning long. So it's just good to be here. Looking forward to this evening. Oh, it's going to be good. Um, we're talking about stress later on this evening as Sister Let's Talk. So um, the event full, completely full, but um had a conversation with one of the sisters today. It's like all kinds of stuff is just popping off, trying to happen. And I was like, isn't it funny? Uh, the enemy trying to stress us out as we get ready to talk about stress. So I just thought that's what the devil does, all right? That's just what the devil does. So when he shows his hand, my sisters, don't be surprised. Don't allow him to cause you to feel discombobulated. You know, anchor yourself and stand on his word. And, and um, I think Minister Joyce read this scripture, a translation from the message, um, translate, stay cool, calm, and collected. When, when something tries to hit you, I'm cool, calm, and collected. That because you're, and only by, only way you can be cool, calm, and collected is not in, in your own strength, is in the strength of the Lord. 
is in trusting in God. So um, I'm so I'm so glad that um, he's he's my God. I'm so get, glad I have the Lord in my life. Can, can you imagine not having the Lord in your life today? I don't know what I would do. Praise God, glory to God. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Pakisha. Hey, Clementine, Latasha, Shanta, Latoya, Allison. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah. So, oh man, it's just been a week for me. When I say a week, not a bad week, but such a high, if, let me just put it in the words that come to me. And I'm always trying to pre-qualify stuff um, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, but it's been a high frequency week for me. I mean, just, I mean, hearing the Lord and just, just, just having these conversations with God is just, and then like portals, portals opening me just seeing it. And it's just been phenomenal. I've just been in awe all week long and humbled by the communication and the interaction and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's just been, it's been that kind of week for me. Um, it's been a good week. It's been a, um, you know, uh, uh, a fear of the Lord week for me. Fear of the Lord. Yes, man. I don't want to, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to, um, disregard. I don't want to take something that doesn't belong to me, uh, for as, that belongs to the Lord. It's just, I have such a, an awareness. It's been a, a, an, a, a sobering, alerted week, if, if that makes any sense. Sobering, like, oh my goodness, God, people don't really know that you're real. But, you know, and, you know, people playing with God and and alert meaning is like, okay, let me just walk really circumspectly. I really believe in times as believers that we really got to tighten up our walk with the Lord and walk circumspectly and uh, and, not, and stop playing, stop playing with the Lord. So um, that's what type of week I've been having. It's, it's so, um, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. You know, uh, I had, it started with this, I started to get up because the Lord was speaking to me on, I want to say it was on Tuesday, you know, and it was just so like wide open. No, no, it was Wednesday. Came in, my days are flowing together. It was Wednesday. It was Wednesday. And it was right after the conversation we had on Clubhouse. And, um, and he just started breaking things down to me, talking. And I was going to get up and get my journal. He's like, no, let me speak this into your spirit. Trust, trust me, Marsha. Trust me that you will retain this word that I'm giving you. Because usually when the Lord's speaking, I start panicking. I'm looking for a journal and what journal I'm going to put it in because I want to make sure I remember that journal. And it got to be a special journal. I'm really weird like that with my journals, y'all. I don't know why, but I am. And so I was going through all of that. He's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, because he knows you, right? He knows a thought before you even have the thought. He knows a word before you even speak that word. He knows the hairs, the number of hairs on your head. So he was just talking to me. He was just saying those things to me. So he's like, I'm watching. Don't get up. Just let me, let me talk this, speak this to you. Let me just speak this. He said, trust me. You will remember. And I, and I laid down and he's okay. Now get up and go write it down. And he told me what journal to write it in, right? He said, write it in this journal. So as soon as I went to my space, my room, and I was as I was walking, had I had gathered all my, oh, I buy journals all the time, right? So I got a stack of unused journals. So I have them on this like little bench here, and I was walking by it, and the journal he told me to use was right on top. So I smiled to myself like, isn't this? And I just start writing, 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 writing. It was all of it came back to me, and I was just so like just just overwhelmed with emotion, man. It was like, it was early in the morning when he's talking. I had to contain myself because at one point I wanted to jump out the bed and scream, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh my God. That's how it was like, it was electrifying. This encounter I had with the Lord was, 
It was electrifying my soul. And I wanted to shout from the top of the lungs what he was, my, you know, my voice, what he was saying. And I was like, my husband is sleeping. And I told him later on, and as I was telling him, he started smiling because the, 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 the joy and the excitement came all over me. I said, see, that's what he was doing. I wanted to scream at four o'clock in the morning. God, you're amazing. Oh, man. But so that's what week I had. That's the week I have. It's been really, really resetting and rejuvenating and um, refreshing spiritually. And it has been recalibrating. And um, I really believe what God is getting ready to do for his people, that he's going he gonna, to he gonna set our souls on fire. At, a, at another level. And this is one of the things I've been asking God to do in my life. I said, God, give me that passion, that zeal, that hunger, that desire I need to have to do what you have called me to do at the level that is necessary. I want not, I don't want to put just a toe in this thing. I want to submerge myself in it. And uh, just just reset me, just reset, recalibrate all of those things. And I've got a, I got a taste of that, man. I mean, that thing just lit my soul. And I believe in this in, in, in this stint of this journey that we're in before Jesus comes back, that he's going to do some things for us internally within our soul. If you present yourself to him on a regular basis daily, like, Lord, here I am. I yield myself to you, God. I can't do this by myself. I yield myself to you. I believe he's going to do something in you that is going to, I mean, going to flip you inside out. My God, it's going to set your soul on fire. It's going to give you peace in the midst of a storm. Glory to God. He's going to, he, he's going to begin to give you instructions and, uh, and how to navigate spaces that you need to navigate, not just for a moment, but for this, for this, for the season, the season that you're in, you know, and seasons is determined by the Lord. Okay. It's not determined by us. It's determined by the Lord, but he's going to do some things in us that, that is so necessary for you to do it the way you need to do it. So that you, it's not just uh, a work. It's not just a, you're doing it because you're faithful, but some of us lost our passion. Some of us, he said, lost your zeal, your hunger, your want to. That thing that you, um, that caused you to go deeper. It's like that love you had when you first met him. You know, when everything looked different, everything looked new. That the the room looked brighter. When I got saved, that's what happened to me. The room looked brighter. I mean, it was just everything looked new, and there was such a there was such a hunger in you that nothing. Nothing could stop you from, from showing up. Nothing could stop you from seeking and searching him out. Now we're like, God, when I get time, I'll do this. But you took time. You took time. You made a decision that you was going to get up. You didn't allow certain things to block your, your relationship with the Lord. That's what he's going to do in this season. Because this type of um, energy and encounter from God, motivation, a determination to uh, to get to God will pull a source. It's going to pull a fire. It's going to pull some juice in your soul. And that's the thing you need to do what God's called you to do. Come on now. All right, y'all. I'm through testifying. And, and my, but I'm telling that's the week it's been. It's been a, such a good Holy Ghost week. All right. Holy Ghost week. Yeah. Flat, yeah, you remember having a flashlight under the cover, reading the word, trying not to wake your husband. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, my God. Thank you, God. That's it, y'all. That's what God's like. What, that passion, that joy. When I'm telling you, I heard God in such a clear way this week. Oh, my goodness. Woo. All right, there's a whole nother level he want to take you to. Come on now. There's a whole nother level the Spirit of God wants to take you to. Let's go. Let's go. All right. I just wanted to share with my family before we got started. But that's how my week has been. 
So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, uh, thank you, Janice. Thank you. I'm really excited um, about what God is doing in this season. When I'm saying, and, and some of it is challenging, but I'm excited about God. Okay, I'm excited about God. Um, things are shifting and changing very fast, y'all. And God is trying to get us to this place so that we can really, truly navigate, you know, navigate the waters, navigate the times and be able to be anchored and be able to, to find our way to him. All right, find our way to him. Amen. But let me give you some announcements and we got to get right, get into this word because I'm doing a lot of talking. Just want to remind you of a few announcements. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Right Direction Church International, we are celebrating coming up on 28 years of ministry and we're going to have an uh, amazing time of celebration and we're celebrating with the church anniversary concert. Special guest Miranda Curtis, and that that's at April twenty first at six p.m. General admission is free. We do have limited twenty five dollar VIP tickets available online at rdci.info. To have it, uh, there's a QR code you can scan that for a VIP experience. That's the twenty eighth church anniversary celebrating on the 21st. We're going to have a good time. We're excited about that. We're going to celebrate. We know Miranda's going to help us uh, celebrate the way she does, and we're going to have a good time with that. On May the 4th at 1230, Saturday, May the 4th, we're having a mother-daughter tea. Like mother, like daughter. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So moms and daughters, come on out. You know, and um, let's celebrate um, Mother's Day, motherhood, um, being a mom, having a daughter in your life. And tickets are $25. Uh, to register, go to IamSquatter.org, IamSquatter.org. It's going to be in a family life center. We're going to have a really good time. And of course, we are hosting y'all. But, you know, we have not really given this that much coverage, but it's such a necessary thing. Watchmen on the Wall is hosting women's self-defense class with the Orangeburg County Sheriff's Office Saturday, April 20th at 10 to 12. Located at Kidstown, 3506 Broadway Road. Listen, for women 18 and older, let's feel confident. Let's feel safe. Let's feel empowered. Let's learn and know how to defend ourselves to, and also to heighten us have a heightened sense of awareness of our surroundings. I think this is a really good thing and it is it's such a necessary thing. So, you know, take some time out, take some time out and arm yourself and empower yourself. You will not regret it. So ladies, register a QR code right there. Um, April the 20th, 10 to 12, self-defense class. Let's get that on. Praise God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's prepare to receive our offering. I thank God for all of y'all. Y'all are amazing and amazing um, in doing what you do. Faithful in giving, faithful in returning your tithe, supportive of the ministry. And we have ways to give right here. You can go to rdci.info forward slash give. You can text rdci to 844-624-1200. Or you can mail it into our PO Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina, 29221. Or drop it off at our physical address, I am admin's office. That's located at 1234 St. Andrews Road. And in doing so, if any other day outside of Friday, if you could put on their manifest, let them know this I'm giving through the manifest uh, vehicle. I really appreciate it. So we can get like let people know. You know, we we givers, we givers, uh, and we're support uh, and, and the manifest community of women of great substance, right? Women of great substance. So I want to read this to you, Proverbs the third chapter, and the seventh verse says, "Be not wise in thy own eyes; fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones." When we walk in a fear and reverential fear of the Lord, understanding who God is, and that. We don't have this all together. I'm not that smart. You know, I'm not that skilled. You know, I understand that it's God who does what he does through me, in me. I know it's God who's done all of this and I can't do anything without him. You know, 
I'm, I, I recognize it's, it's his power and his ability that gives me the ability to go to and fro my day to do what I need to do. It was him that get, blessed me with his job, my family. So we, so we recognize like, hey, this ain't about me. It's all about God. And because I recognize that I'm going to do my best to walk out my righteousness and I'm going to walk circumspectly. And it says, shall be help to me. It's going to help me. And the ninth verse is where I want to actually go to. It said, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall be burst out with new wine. When we honor God, when we honor God with our substance, substance is our increase, is our, is our finances. And we recognize it's him. God, because of all of that you do and all that you are in my life, I'm going to honor you. And when I have it and I can't give it, God, because if I have it, I can give it. Because I honor you, because I fear you, I'm going to give it. You know, and so when you when there's an offering and when I it's my time to tithe, my week to tithe, I return my tithe. I'm not in fear because I understand that you got me. You got me, God. Praise God. Come on. Somebody say, God, you got me. You got me. You know, sometimes when this thing's going on, it's like, can I tithe? No, I get to tithe. I, 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 I can't hold this tithe back for myself because it belongs to God. There's times when I'm traveling, if I'm busy and the time zone change, I, I may, I'm like, I may like, oh my God, the next day or later on that week, I said, I didn't tithe. Oh my God. Because I don't want to not honor God. I don't want, I don't want him to think that it's, you know, that I didn't, I don't recognize it's because of him, you know? And so because of him, I have. And so when every time I get paid, it's because of you, God, my goodness. Wow. It's because of you, God, I, I, I get an opportunity to, to deposit this check in my account. So it's a small thing for me to give you 10%. I trust you that you have me. I remember times, y'all, when I didn't look like, I was like, God, I take this 10%. It's going to be a struggle. You know, and that's what it looked like then. I'm telling you, but he made a way. He always made a way. He always made a way. When it's like, you know, have y'all been there? Let's be honest. Let's tell the community. Come on, let's have everyone in the community. I've been there. Okay. I know I already said I was there. I've been there. You know, you know, raise your hand if you ever been there when you know it's your week to tithe. You got your paycheck and you looked at your tithe and you looked at what was left and you wondered, God, well, how am I going to get this or how am I going to do that or how am I going to manage that? Have you anybody ever felt like that? Yeah. See, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. It's a it's a it's a it's a rite of passage of tithing, y'all. It's a rite of passage of tithing, and it's not just early on. It's it's through the seasons, right? Depending what what you got going on in your life. There was one time I was having graduations all the time, and and you know, let me tell you something. Bishop does. He takes care of mortgage. He takes care of everything, right? He takes care of. But I buy groceries with the kids, all the extra stuff with the kids, um, graduation parties, any kind of party, any kind of celebration, uh, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, all of that stuff. That is something I take care of. And um, feeding a family of six was very expensive, very expensive. That's what I took care of. And then when they played sports, they... And boys, they ate a lot of food. So there's times when I was like, you know, and I, because I just did stuff. Sometimes my husband didn't know what I would do, but I was playing for, I was paying for these, all these fees for volleyball. Kids were playing volleyball. That was like a thousand dollars plus. And, you know, um, all the time, you know, and then the travel, then the hotels and all that kind of stuff. And the boys and everybody, everybody in high school at the same time, er everybody, People in school, college, and the private school pay for books, pay for that. It was expensive, but I trusted. I had to trust God. I had to trust God. So even when the early years, I had to trust God. And the God blessed me years, I still had to trust God. 
Okay. Still have to trust God. And so I'm in a season now, I still have to trust God. And so that I have to remind myself that he got me. He got me because then I said, when I honor him, so shall my your barns be filled. So my vats will burst out with new wine. So I may use some wine. It's going to, God's going to give me some new wine. He's going to give me some new, a new flow. He's going to give me some fresh stuff. Amen. He got you. He got you. I just want to encourage you with that as we head towards this season. Of course, at Right Direction Church International, we have Super Seed Sunday coming up. And I just want to encourage y'all, don't be in fear. Don't, you know, do what you can. Trust God and um, and continue to prepare. Continue. Don't wait for that day to come on you, but continue to prepare and believe God that as you prepare and set that number, right? Okay, this is how the devil works. You don't set that number because I done I set a number. I prepared, you know, and then of course so you look at it going right. Okay, God got you. He got you. He got you. So um, just use wisdom, all right? Just use wisdom. Just use wisdom for the next couple of weeks. You know, the splurging, you know, the extra, all that other stuff that's unnecessary, you know, um, eating out, all that kind of stuff. I don't care who's doing what. Who's doing what? Focus on your life, okay? Focus on, worry about yourself. Worry about yourself. Don't get caught up with what everybody else is doing. You got a plan. You're working on something, all right? You know, do what you need to do and so and trust God. Let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for everyone on the sound of my voice, that you continue to bless them, continue to increase my curse lack insufficiency. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this time of gathering around your word, that you begin to speak truth to us and application to us and wisdom to us and revelation through me, God. Use my mouth, my mind to speak your word of being about a barrier breaker. I thank you, Lord God, that you begin to reveal those barriers that need to be broken in our life, that we refuse to be contained any longer, that we refuse to be limited. We refuse to be fearful and anxious. We, ref we refuse to operate, Lord God, with low self-esteem and insecurity. We refuse the lower nature God to second guess, to doubt, to be anxious, to be jealous, to be competitive, to be envious. All those things that limit us, God. We determine right now to break free. We determine right now to go beyond these limits, these borders that have been self-imposed through experience, through trauma, through um, words that were spoken over us. I come against negative words, the, neg the negative words that have been spoken over us, negative prophecies, Lord. I come against those things. I declare and decree they will not be walked out, fulfilled any longer in the name of Jesus. I come against the chatter, the chatter, the fear chatter in our heads, the things that said what we can't, what we aren't, what we, that we're not good enough. I, I take authority over those words right now in the name of Jesus. I come against the fear of man, people preoccupation, Lord, that they're talking about me, that they're looking about me, what they're saying about me. I, I take authority over that right now in Jesus' name. Our eyes are locked in on you. We're concerned first and foremost about your thoughts, your ways, your heart, God, regarding us, God. We seek to please you, Lord. So we present our bodies to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice, God, holy and acceptable. Have your way in us and through us, God, in the name of Jesus. We shatter the barriers of containment right now, the walls and barriers of resistance, holding patterns. I command you to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Ghost, have your way in us and through us in the name of Jesus. And we glorify you, God. We magnify you, God, and we give you praise. Glory to God. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus over this population of individuals. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over their families. I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that pertains to them. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord God, that the blood shields and the blood heals and the blood protects in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm drinking some ginger tea. <coughs> 
which I should not do because it makes me go to the bathroom, but y'all pray. So I may like, excuse me. All right. But pray I won't have to do that. Awesome. Let's, let's get into this word that the Lord been dealing with me about this being a barrier breaker. Okay. We are barrier breaker, a barrier breaker woman. Amen. We are, I'm the barrier breaker woman. I'm the barrier breaker woman. And that's what God is raising us up as women to be barrier breakers. Our foundational scripture, Micah, the second chapter, the 12th verse. And it says, I will certain, certainly gather all of you, oh, Jacob. Let me say, oh, women. I will certainly gather you, my sisters, my daughters. I will symbol all, symbol those Israelites who remain. Mm. There's some people who aren't around because of life getting the best of them. But you hung around. You stayed faithful. Guys, I'm bringing you into the fold. I'm bringing you together like a sheep in a fold, like a flock in the middle of a pasture. I'm hearing this by the Spirit of the Lord. You're going to have some new relationships, divine connections, supernatural connections. Because what some, what some of us are doing, right? Is there some people who have fallen away, strayed away, and you're like, that's my girl, and that is your sister, okay? That's your girl. That's your friend, okay? That's your friend. But she's not walking the way she should be walking or she, at the level that God is calling you to walk. So as a result of it, because you don't want to try to act brand new, you're not trying to like be funny, you're not trying to like act like you're better than her. Am I speaking to anyone right now? So what you're doing, you're trying to, you know, make sure that you stay relevant and touchable and accessible with her at a level that's causing you to dial it back some. You're not your full self. You're, you're your old self, but there's a new you that's trying to emerge that's, you know, that God's calling you to to really just kind of sell out to him at a deeper level, to surrender, that's a better word, to surrender, and you know, and to really just yield. And you made some decisions about some things and you say, you know what, God, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. But she's like, well, your girl's like, but come on, can you do this? Let's go here, what have you. And like, you're like, there's nothing wrong, but your her conversation is just not where you, where the brains, your, your, where your brain pattern wave is flowing, you know, it's good conversation, but it's like, it's just surface, it's just superficial, and, and some of the stuff is petty, and just talking about this, and talking about who said what, and talking about who's not doing this, and just that chatter, and you're like, mm, it's okay, but you find yourself just listening, because, and not really adding into the conversation, and God's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing you into a fold. I'm bringing you into a place to meet people of like-minded faith. Okay, like-minded. Faith. I'm bringing you into some um, have into proximity of people who think like you, who move like you, who navigate like you. I'm gonna bring you so you don't feel like you um, awkward. You feel like, you know, and the only way you fit in is just like you kind of just dial it back some. You're not, you know, and God said, no, I'm going to bring you into some group of women and some people that you can identify with, that will challenge you, that will stretch you, that will make you feel like, you know, alive, you know, and excited. It will, it, your baby is going to leap. Or who do you have in your life that makes your baby leap? Who do you have in your life that makes your baby leap? Well, he's like, oh, I got this person. How often do you talk to your, that baby leaper igniter? So you, you have to connect with people who stimulate vision, stimulate your imagination. Oh, Rabbi, say, take it. Stimulate and ignite your faith. Man, we had, you know, we when we were down to Charleston and we was talking with some a friends of ours and we was just talking the word of faith, talking the word of God. Man, it took me back to those days when we would sit around after service and 
break bread and talk about the Lord and talk about what God's going to do and what he's doing in our lives. And we, and we, you know, I mean, it just ignited faith. And what we're done, y'all, is we have traded that out because we heard it's too deep, being so deep for, and because the people that you came in contact with who were maybe in places, they're like, ah, oh, don't take all of that. And so you don't do, you don't do that anymore, but you need people to say, yes, this can happen. Yes, this can be done. And yes, we, yes, you can do X, Y, Z. He's, I'm going to bring you in. He's, I'm going to bring you into the middle of that pasture, my God. And there'll be numerous that they will make a lot of noise. And the one who, the one who can break through the barrier will lead them out. Pass through the gate and leave. The king will advance before them. The Lord himself will lead them. He says, so, I mean, when you get in with your with people that you can identify, man, a noise will erupt, man. A shout will erupt. Praise God. And then as you move out, man, he's a, the king. Jesus is our king. He's going to lead us out. And he's going to bring us to the place, the King Breaker, Jesus the Breaker, is going to lead us to break out, and we're going to break into places, and we're going to break into levels, and we're going to break into dimensions that God is calling us to occupy. Come on, we're going to break out of self-containment zones. We're going to break out of um, soul containers that we have, limited thinking. We're going to break those things out. Say, I'm the Breaker is going to lead us out. And Jesus wants us to understand that he's calling us to follow him as the breaker. <clears throat> so he's the breaker. We are the breakers. Come on. And we're going we're gonna to begin to demonstrate and show our people, praise God, that we no longer will be contained by certain levels that have been in our bloodline. That you are that one. We talked about that. You are that woman. You are that one. You know, and people thought you was way too much doing the most. Why are you always this? And why are you? Because you're the breaker. You're a breaker for this generation. You're the breaker for your family. Come on now. You're going to let them know it can be done. Psalm 68 and 6 talks about he got places in solitary and families and gives the desolate a home in which to dwell. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity. But the, the but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. I'm not going to be rebellious. I'm going to break out. I'm not going to allow um, cultural norms, societal norms, paradigm, um, experience to, to set invisible walls around me and tell me, okay, barrier breakers, that's what we have to do. I can't. No, I can. Will it feel good? You may feel scared. You may feel scared, but you know what? You go in the strength of God, getting ahead of myself here. You, you just trust God. And as you keep your eyes on him and you make a decision, you know, I may not get it right. I may look really weird doing it, awkward doing it, you know, doing something you feel like you're out of the body because you're not really got to flow with it. And you say, well, I won't do it until I feel good about it. No, do it. I don't know who am I talking to. Do it. God will bless your going. He will empower you as you go. If we have it all together, then it's not him. God said, it's got to be about me. So he's like, okay, God, I don't have it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to trust you in it. So you just breathe on me. And as you do it, you'll break out of those patterns that you saw in your bloodline and your family. That's something the Lord was dealing with me about. That you know, Many of us want to break into levels and arenas and and into and and door and rooms, but we get in there and those barriers and those are still set up in our soul that we see in our mama do and our, our sisters do and our auntie do it, how we talk, how we think, how we act. And you find yourself hiccuping in the room and faltering in the room. He says, it's not 
the room. It's the barriers within your soul. So we got to break out of those patterns, those self-limiting, self-defeating, self-deprecating patterns that we have, that we talk, uh, we have an inner noise about ourselves, that we say about ourselves, that sometimes we don't even, we don't believe in ourselves. We don't like ourselves, but we say it outwardly. But guys, I need you to break those barriers, those patterns within your soul so that when you get in a room, you don't sabotage yourself. Who am I talking to? So here you're he calling us a woman to go with no woman in your bloodline, in your friend group. This is some, oh my gosh, in your the friend group has gone before. Sometimes y'all cool, y'all cool until there's a breakout, until there's a one that who breaks out. Then all of a sudden, it's like, girl, you're doing the most. There you go again. Any barrier breaker have dealt all barrier breakers at one point in their lives have dealt with the noise. What you doing? Who do you think you are? I told you what started this whole uh, way of this this space I'm in, this 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 thinking is um uh, I was watching the movie Shirley uh, on on Netflix on Shirley about Shirley Chisholm. She was a barrier breaker. The opposition she had to deal with, the resistance she had to deal with, she had to come. In, she had to deal with those barriers in her, uh, with guarding her family, the chatter, the noise. And I'm like, she's a barrier breaker, you know. And so it made me begin to think about this. Like he, she was going where no woman has gone before, especially no woman of color has gone before, you know. And when you're going out of you, you're pushing. When you're pushing that line forward. There will be people asking you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's wrong? Let's let's just have church. Girl, let's just like, you know, you're good. You're living good. You got all your bills are paid, but you know, like, there's something more. You know, but suppose I fail. Suppose you don't. And suppose you do, get back up, get back up. Listen, whew, this is so good to me, get back up. And sometimes the whole thing of failing is not so much about how you feel, it's how you look. It's more of a concern of how will, what will people say about me? Are they paying your bills? Are they buying your clothes? Or they're paying your rent or mortgage, your car note. They're so what? They're going to talk. Let them talk. God is calling you as a woman to go where no woman in your family has gone before. He's calling you to explore some new frontiers. He's calling you to do some new things. Glory to God. In your age, at your age, I want to let you know, as long as there's breath, this was the Lord began to deal with me, as long as there's breath in your body, there's something he wants you to do. Stop comparing yourself to your younger you. Oh, my goodness. Bless my soul. Stop comparing yourself to your younger you. God said, until you hit the grave, I need you. I need you. I want you. I desire you. I got use for you. You can break a barrier at 70. You can break a barrier at 60. You can break a barrier at 50, at 40. Some of you think I'm not in my 20s. I don't care. God said, I need you where you are in this season of your life. Somebody give God a praise. <clears throat> I'm dealing with some sinus drip, y'all, from all this yuck outside. So listen here. We're going to break some barriers, some limits, some self-imposed and customs, things learned or implied. We got to face our fears, push past hurt. Y'all, some of us just stopped doing because it's just, I got hurt. People said stuff. People didn't believe in you. People lied on you. People try to block you out. Get back in the game. You got to push past the hurt and persevere in your faith, y'all. We got to persevere in your faith. All of those things are just like they're designed. It's designed to cause you to stop cause you not to go forward 
And it's also to try you. Do you really believe this is who you are? This you really believe that this is what God's calling you to do? You got to outlast the the no's. You got to outlast the the, criti the criticism. You got to outlast the negativity. I said last week, you can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. You can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. People going to say stuff. They're going to pick you apart. They're going to look you up and down, especially as women. I know men say this sometimes. Women are the best supporters as women of women. But sometimes women are the worst supporters of women, especially if they want to be in your shoes. Especially if they want to be you. Or especially if they think they're better than you. They won't support you. They they on the outside, but you'd be like, mm, she ain't really all that for me. We talked about that, you know, that jealousy and envy, it comes with the territory. Just don't let it be you. Don't let it be you. Don't go down to their level. Don't allow them to draw you into competition with them. If God has called you to something told you to do something. They can't compete with you. That's you, boo. They can't compete with you. <clears throat> that is you. Own what he called you to do. Because what God has blessed you with, what God has called you to do is for you. Nobody can take that from you unless you give it to them. And the way you give it to them, if you let them get in your head and make you think that you aren't up to par and you start eyeing them and you start looking for affirmation from them you start looking for validation from them and you're allowing them to mess with your head causing you to second guess so causing you to falter in your thoughts and now what has happened you unknowingly slid into a competition with them and you got to get them out of your head Laser focus, look ahead, ignore them, train yourself not to pay them any attention. I don't know who I'm talking to. Don't wear your feelings on your sleeve. You get finished doing something, they say nothing about it. You don't need that good job. You don't need that good job. You don't need to hear that. You don't need that. What is the Lord telling you? Your affirmation, your validation, your approval comes from the Lord. Somebody put that in the comment box. My aff affirmation, my validation, my approval comes from the Lord. Pass the test of going through a season without compliments. Pass the test of going through a season without compliments. Pass it. Don't, you got to pass. That means you keep showing up. You keep doing. You don't change what you do. You don't change how you dress. You don't change how you do your hair. You don't tell me, well, maybe something wrong with me. Man. Uh, 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 uh. Pass the test. Pass the test without getting compliments. Woo! Somebody said, I'm getting free right now. I'm getting free right now. I'm getting free right now. Because what happens as a barrier breaker woman, you will confront these spirits of jealousy, spirit of envy, spirits of opposition, resistance, to try to contain you, to try to get you to draw back, okay? To get you to walk and operate in self-doubt. If, yes, if you have self-doubt, you will have low self-esteem, lack confidence, what you do requires the molecule of confidence in your voice. Come on now. In your eyes. You got to have, I mean, that spirit needs to know and looking at your eyes, your stare, that you know who you are in Christ. I might not be where I need to be, but I know because I done seen something. I saw something. Okay, I know I'm doing a lot of talking. I saw something. I saw something. And it locked in in my soul. And it comes out through my stare that even though you won't even, see, I, don't, I don't have your, a, a voice of support or your affirmation. I don't need it. Come on, get free from people. Get free from them. Okay, all right, all right. So here we go. So you develop that bounce back. Thick skin in the right places. So when you encounter rejection, betrayal, jealousy, envy, warfare, and navigate life, you can bounce back. You have to be able to bounce back. Now, I often, what I see in ministry a lot, 
and especially in ministry leadership and teams, is that competitive jealousy and envy spirit. That's how the devil gets put a lid on genius. He put a lid on brilliance. That's what I see a lot. What I see in ministry, because that's what I do. In teams, I like teams. I love. To, I, I'm, a, I'm a team person. Okay, a team person. Teams fascinate me. I study teams and how they function and why are you. What's going on? I was talking. I'm trying to, I was telling someone recently, I'm just trying to find a psychology out of this team. You know, just look, watching and studying movements and interactions. But what undercuts a team is competitive jealousy, envy. It, it limits the effectiveness and limits the brilliance of the team. It thrives in ministry. That's how it thrives because nobody wants to rock the boat or cause problems or kick against the system. And because you ain't trying to be all that, you're like, you know what? I'm going to let them have that. I'm going to let them have that because I don't need all of that. And you say, oh, I'm just going to let you go ahead and be great. And so what you're doing, you're giving competitive jealousy and envy that spirit room to thrive, room to grow. But I need the barrier breakers to break it up. Break it up. Break it up. Okay, now I talked about last. I'm going back to the, the you know, <laughs> I'm going back to the definition of jealousy. It feels threatened or insecure that someone would take what they have, take their position, take their place, take how they, you know, the position, how they look. Jealousy has to do with deal with two or three people or two or three things. Okay. Envy, you long for what someone has or who they have are. You want to be them. You want to be them. Woo! Now, Lloyd's been dealing with me about this whole thing. He said, Marsha, I need you to get up in here with this jealousy and envy stuff because what I'm trying to do in these last and evil days, I need a team spirit. I was watching some of the um, the NCAA um, championship and they would, I would hear some of the feedback from the, um, the commentators and the coaches and what's going on with their teams while they're playing? He said, right now, they're not playing at their best because they're not playing as a team. They're playing selfishly. They won't pass the ball. And I'm like, so they all want that championship, but what's the problem? See, what has happened, who kind of spoiled the game with these young people a little bit, and it's really because they're young, it's really hard for them to stay focused a little bit is the NIL, okay? The NIL is the ability for these kids to get paid and they're getting paid big bucks and people saw, you know, social media, they're talking about how much is this, this one's getting paid through so sponsors and through things and they, they start brands and, and all initiatives and they doing all this stuff. So if they can have a particular splash at that game, look a particular way, their numbers go up and they can get more money, demand more money and all that kind of stuff. So it's threatening the whole team sport. <clears throat> With some, it's threatening the team sport. So, and so as a result of that, because it's looking like someone could propel out and get something now. So when, you, when you're concerned about your own selfish gain and how you will look or being noticed or being seen, you won't share the light. You won't share the light. Secure people share the light. Selfish people, insecure people won't share the light. What does that look like? Not sharing information, being a being a knowledge, being the information holder. You hold all the information. And you have on a team and nobody knows what you know. And if you're not there, everything folds. That's not a team spirit. That's not a team spirit. So God said, I need that. I for as this generation of women that God is calling us, He said, as women, I need you to break it up. 
break it up, begin to ask questions, begin to say, hey, why you did not do? Why are you not saying this? Why are you not sharing this? You know, you can't say you're jealous, <laughs> you're envious. They're not going to say that. Be like, what's going on? What's up with that? You know, why, why you not, why you, why you didn't tell me? Is everything okay? Begin to raise the awareness and challenge people. Iron sharpens iron. As barrier breaking women, you're supposed to be iron and you sharpen other iron. You help them to become better. I mean, and I think we've been we've been quiet on a lot of stuff. And that's how the enemy is able to limit us and able to um, put a lid on us and, and, and cut down our effectiveness and, our, and lessen our impact. You know, and, and God said, I need, I need you to settle some things. I need you to settle who you are in me. I have what I have for you, I have for you, and nobody else can take from you. S be settled in that so that when it's time to do what I'm calling you to do, you can connect to the fold I'm bringing you into. I already read in the, the foundation of scripture, I'm going to bring you into a fold. I'm shifting your circle. I'm rearranging some things in your life. There's a remnant that I'm, 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 I've been saving for these last days. There's some folks who have fallen away. You still, they're still cool in your life, but you're not really connected to them like you used to be connected. And until you connect to the fold, because you're feeling out of place, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling all by yourself. And God said, I do have some people I want you to connect with, but I want to hear the fold, the fold to understand when these new people come in. Don't feel insecure by their light. God is bringing more light so you can see what to do. My goodness. Anybody? I'm being blessed by this. So Jesus is the barrier breaker. And he's telling us, let's break up these barriers. Jealousy and envy, competitive jealousy and bringing in competitive jealousy because what competitive jealousy is, it won't share information. They want to look good. They want to look like they're the smartest light bulb in the pack the brightest one. They don't hold you, give you information. If they give you information, they give it to you at the last minute so you can't really actually prepare to be at your best. You know, um, they're not thinking about the team. They're thinking about themselves. So um, when things don't come together, it's not them, it's you. And so, and God said, all of that is impacting the greater good of things. He says it's impacting the, 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 the whole and it's about them. And God said, no, I, I'm, bring, I, I'm bringing you out of all of that. That season, that stuff, it has to quit. It has to stop. God said, I'm soon to come. And I need my people to be ready. I need my people to, and I, you know, to be able to go to this, this, this dimension I'm bringing them into. So I'm bringing um, new people in your life. And into the fold, and I and they're gonna come with the light. I, I, I wasn't planning to even to go here. They're gonna come with the light, they're gonna come with a way of thinking, a way of doing. Don't try to snuff it out because it's different. I heard this by the spirit of the Lord the yesterday, and I've been pondering it and I wrote it down, looking to where I need to apply it and how I need to apply it. I heard the word pivot, pivot. And um, it just came back up because I was going to share it with someone today. It might be somebody who may need to hear this word. Pivot is completely change the way in which one does something. And so I asked the Lord, where do I need to pivot? What, what do you, where do I need to pivot? Change completely, completely. Not so, how the way in which you, you do something. And God began to say, I need you to pivot. So you're going to have to pivot. It's going to, this is our system. This is how we do this. This is the way we do it. This is da 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 Pre-pandemic. We're not there anymore. It's post-pandemic. We're not in the same place. We're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, my goodness. Uh, are y'all with me? I haven't even got to my notes. I haven't got to my notes, y'all. Okay. And so as a result of it, it's like, gosh, are you taking this 
you like you putting a trying to get a square peg and you're trying to put it in a round hole. You got to pivot how you talk to people, how you receive people, how you see them, how you interact with them, what will meet their needs. Pivot. Ah, so, yeah. Yeah. And so that's where I'm at. I heard that where I was, okay, God, okay, pivot. Because sometimes you unknowingly, especially people who are schedules and plans and charts and what have you, you can have a way of doing things. And you just got to pivot, you know. Uh, you know, you got to, uh, so you, I don't know who that applies to, um, but there might be an area in your life God's been dealing with you about. And he's, I'm calling you to pivot. I'm calling you to pivot. You know, I, I saw something in particular. It's, you know, it says, especially in a business contest, completely change in way which you, one does something. The team, here's the, here go. The teams perform exceptionally by quickly pivoting to meet the increased demands from our customers. Well, it's not good. I wanted to go back to what I read when I was reading that um, explanation of that definition through the, the sentences. And sometimes what happens, there's a demand that is, 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 that's current right now, you know, and I, and my son said this during the pa pandemic, um, when we was, uh, when, we, when everything was uh, social distancing at uh, that like first couple of months of the pandemic, he said, I heard the Lord say, he who pivots first will get paid. That there was there was a stream of income during that time to to be to be tapped into, but what you had to do is change completely how you do business, change completely how you meet the demand, change completely. And some of the things, I mean, one sister was she's even online. She was talking to me about something, and I was like, mm, "That ain't me, you know, that ain't me." She's like, I, "I see a need for this, Pastor Marsh. I see a need," and I didn't pivot on it. Because why I kept saying it, it, that's not me. That's not me. She said, I can see, you know, it would be a blessing to people. And I'm like, and in my mind, I was thinking, well, how I'm going to do it, who I'm going to get to put this together, to all this kind of stuff. I was looking at the work of it. And I even just, I didn't even, I didn't even create one. I didn't create one. And so I didn't pivot. And I had to change completely how I, thought of myself change complete me completely how I think about myself. I was like, oh, that ain't me. And I look back at it now. I look back at it now and I'm like, mm, God, you were speaking. You were speaking. There was things that God was speaking. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to look like this. I don't want it to look, I didn't pivot. So I believe another time is coming that we're going to have to pivot. It's going to be opportunity for us to like, you know, uh, you're going to hear this word right here, pivot. And you I want you to go back when the when the moment comes to you, when that door swings open to you, when that 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 time is revealed to you. OK, and you and something checks your heart like I need to change. <clears throat> hear the word pivot. Think of the definition pivot. Because God got something in the pivot for you. He has something in the pivot for you. All right. All right. Luke, the fourth chapter, the 18th verse. This is as far as I'm going to get today. Jesus, the breaker, he came to break and lead us out to be barrier breakers. Okay. Jesus, the breaker, he came to break us out to be barrier breakers. Jesus just came through a time of being tempted in the wilderness by the devil he was fasted. He was fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, passed the test, went into the city, went into the temple, the synagogue, opened up the book, and he opened up the book and found where, where this passage of scripture was. And he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty, 
them that are bruised, woo, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed that book and he sat down. People like, what? So Jesus, the breaker, he said, I came. The anointing is on my life. And I'm going to preach this good news to the poor. You don't have to be poor no more. And he sent me to heal your broken heart. So you don't allow it to limit you. Allow it to shape your vision. Don't allow you to, it, uh, you won't allow it to determine how far you can go. And that, and I'm going to preach deliverance to anything that has you bound in your life. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to preach you out of bondage and out of soul captivity. And that you're going to begin to see again, not just physically, but the, the eye gates of your soul. You know, the light in your eye that you had when you were like in high school, you know, that senior year light. Anybody remember that senior year light? A spring, that spring semester, your senior year? Oh, how about that, that, the. That light in your eye when your parents are dropping you, you your first day at college or you're dropping you off at the dorm. Anybody remember that light? I can look back at those pictures. I'd be like, I was that young girl with like the world is full of opportunity. I mean, I felt grown, but wasn't grown. I was like, yes. Felt like I was, I mean, me and my friend I uh, met in college. We still good friends now. We look back at these old pictures and we was like, we thought we were everything. We thought we were hot. We thought we had it going on. We just, we just had that light in our eyes. You couldn't tell us anything. You know, you remember that light? Guys, I want that. I want that light back. Mm, so he wants to restore how you see life, how you see yourself. How does, how you see the people in your life. Yeah, you light as a butterfly. Butterfly, he was just like excited about life. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, the recovery of sight, recovery of vision. I speak right now to anyone who's dealing with a loss of vision, not just physical eyesight, but internal eyesight, that you have no hope regarding your future, no hope regarding relationships in your life, no hope about yourself. I come against that demonic spirit that's trying to blind you, dull your vision about purpose, about yourself, about your capacity, about your ability, about your relationships in your life. I come against that demonic device right now. I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. I command those eyes not to be shut. I command them to be begin to open again that the Holy Ghost um, fire begins to burn so bright on the inside of you that your eye, eyes light up right now, that your continents lift, that your, the color brightens in your skin. I thank you, Lord God, for vibrancy. I thank you, Lord God, for a lifting of your soul right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come on now. Here, that's what you have. I come against that spirit right now with the circumstance, the sequence of circumstances, the cycle of it again and again and again. I come against I, I, Jesus, the breaker breaks cycles. I take the authority and I break cycles right now in your life in the name of Jesus. And he said, he said I'm going to set them who are liberty, who are bruised. Now, this is where I can't actually get into. I don't get into a look. When you have a bruise, there's a tenderness. There's a sore. And, and I believe it's in Genesis. I'm going to go there and I'm going to start to speak intelligently. The third chapter. This is what I get when I sit outside and, <coughs> and try to dust off power. Why didn't I wear a mask? Okay, yeah. The third chapter. Uh, 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 uh. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. The 15th verse here. And this is the Lord dealing with Adam and Eve and the serpent. He says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Because so when there's a bruise, it hurts, it's tender, and you might not be able to put touch it, put weight on it. If it's on your foot, it's tender, it's hard to walk. Satan wants us bruised, okay? Bruised so that we can't 
We can't take pressure. Oh, that's good right there. Because sometimes when we come against conflict and resistance and intensity, life, that's what happened. When the pandemic hit, it was it was a real deal life world situation crisis. If there was bruises undealt with, it couldn't take the pressure of it. We're in a time, hear me now, by the spirit of God. Now stop living with these bruises. We gotta, we gotta submit them unto the Lord. We gotta do the work that we need to do so that the bruise, you may have a scar. I mean, this this place is where I got I've gotten hurt throughout my life. I got a little like scar right here. It's no longer tender. I, I see where what I, that I got a wound right there, but I can I can touch it. It's not sensitive. I have a reminder of it. God wants you to have a reminder of your paradigm, a reminder of your abuse, a reminder of your abandonment, a reminder of your rejection, not a tenderness, not a sore, not a sensitivity, not a hypersensitivity. He's like, I don't, I don't want that because life will be life. And anytime life will be life, you, you, you draw back. You, you, you know, it's like it causes you not to push forward. We got to be able to keep cadence. We got to be able to keep going. So he wants those things to be healed. And he says to set at liberty them that are bruised. He wants you untangled from your bruises. He, he don't want you shackled to your bruise. What am I talking about? You can go through some stuff, y'all. And even though you're years beyond it, you're still shackled to it. You're still shackled to the molestation. You're still shackled to the abortion. You're still shackled to the adultery. You still shackle. I'm, I'm dealing with the stuff that, you know, that we may have done or was done to us that's really hard that we don't talk about. You still shackle from it. Nobody can see it, but you still shackled to it. God said, I want it just to be a scar, not a bruise. Mm, not a bruise. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord favor that I'm not judging you. I'm not condemning you. I love you. You will have my favor. My goodness, my goodness. I'm going to bless the work of your hands. I'm going to bless your going. God, would you bless me? Are you going to bless? Me? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to empower you to get wealth. I'm going to help you to do what I, I'm calling you to do. I'm not sending you out there to fail. Don't you know the thoughts I have towards you that I think towards you that are good, not evil, that will bring you to an expected end. I'm not playing games with your life. Become unshackled from that thing. Glory to God. My God. Get free from it. See it, but don't be it. I'm no longer that. That's not me. That's not me. I'm not my abuse. I, I'm not my drug addiction. I, I'm not my 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 alcoholic past. I, I'm not my you know you know my I'm not my like lasciviousness. I'm not that. I'm not who, that. That's not who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm a barrier breaker. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on now. He's I want to unshackle you from that. I want you to cut yourself free. You are not that. That's not who you are. Stop identifying with that. To set at liberty. I'm going to keep them that are bruised. Glory to God. I can't get off of that. Sometimes what happens, that, that thing that's and it's real, what we went through, what we dealt with, that is replayed over and over and over. It's in our psyche. It becomes who we are. We see it every day. It's in our interaction. It's in our communication. It's in how we how we think. Is it? And so we think that's who we are. <clears throat> and that's all we ever be. And that's as good as it gets. But God said, Jesus, the barrier breaker, the breaker. He's, I'm leading you out of this today. Hear me by the spirit of the Lord. Today, he's leading you out. I'm leading you. Follow the breaker out of that prison. Follow the breaker out of that cell. Follow the breaker out of it. That is not who you are. I don't care if you're still stuck in an addiction. I don't care if you're still slipping and sliding and, and, and 
fornication. I don't care if you're still doing certain things. That's not you. Don't don't let it be you. You are not that. Come on now. That is not who you are. Don't allow it to define you. Come on now. The breaker is leading you out. He's leading you out today. And he's going to say, I'm, I'm bring, identify with who I called you to be. That's who you are. And some of us might not have ever heard anything positive, really good about yourself, but you get before God. God, tell me who I am. Speak to me about me. God, speak to me about me. Show me me. Show me me, God. Show me who I am in your eyesight. Come on, show me. the. Talk to me about the thoughts that you have towards me. Oh, I'm being blessed, my God. This time, I mean, early on, early on before the Lord. And I still do this, not even, but I started it when I was just confused, y'all. I started thinking about, I started talking about this on um, in Clubhouse. When I came to the Lord, uh, I think opportunity asked the question regarding, is there anything that once a time we believed then that we don't believe now regarding you know, and it came to me. And I was like, "Well, when I came to God, we was talking about religion and tradition, and and how you might have been wrapped up in that." I never understood religion and tradition because when I came to the Lord, I, I didn't come out of fear of death, fear of hell. I came to the Lord out of love. I mean, I I mean, who I came into his running arms of love. I was in service, and I just. Lord, it starts, you know, there was a battle for my soul. I heard the voice of God, heard the devil telling me to get up and run. There's going to altar calls, get ready to come. And I never been in this church before. I didn't know anything about an altar call. And then I couldn't move. And I was frozen in my seat. And I, and I was hearing this voice. And I was looking at, you know, at the time, my boyfriend, my husband now, I saw him like in deep prayer. I'm like, what's going on? He wouldn't look at me and felt like I was out of body and this preacher was talking, had a, 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 was just talking about somebody that the Lord was dealing with. And I felt like I was just like, my heart was racing. And the Lord, I heard a voice say, if you say, I want to get saved, this will break. What you're going through will break. And I said, I want to get saved. And it broke. It just broke. And so I, I came to God because he loved me so Man, he loved me so. And the man of God began to tell me about my, what was going on in my life and my family. And like, see, at that time, I thought I was nothing. I thought I was so, my life was just, I was like, I got, I got high. I was hanging out in the streets. I was just, you know, I really was trying to sabotage myself. I was on a, I was on a, I was on the, on the path to an early death. I really was. I was reckless. I was just reckless. I didn't care about my life. I didn't think much about my life. I wasn't going to try to hurt anybody else, but I was just like, just reckless. I didn't know limits. You know, I just didn't know limits. And, and so at that moment, and, and then I looked throughout my life and different times when I was almost getting ready to get caught up with something, I would hear a voice say, Hey, this is going to happen. Leave. Or this would get ready to happen. Don't go here. And each time I was spot on. And my friends would say, girl, you're crazy. Nobody's there. What are you talking? There you go again. And that's said, no, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Wait until I get here. So, And I and then I hear, Marsha, run. I turn around. Someone's chasing me. I heard what was getting ready to happen and before it actually happened. And the Lord began to show me at that point of receiving him. The, all that time I thought I was by myself, he was with me always. That he was the one that was protecting me. That he got me out of those situations. So I saw this thread of protection even when I wasn't saved. I mean, he saved my life to be saved. I'm like, I could, I mean, and why would he do that to me? So I, when I came to the Lord, I knew he loved me. He loved me. He loved me. So I was like, God, you love me like that. And so I recognized the patterns in my life were bruises that Satan wanted me to have. So I could not walk 
and confidence on the path and purpose and destiny of my life. But the spirit of God, Jesus, the breaker, he calls us out, right? And leads us out. And you have to make a decision and realize and receive his love, y'all, that I am not who I was. I'm not my environment. I'm not what it looks. I don't care what your life look like. That's not you. Don't allow your circumstance, don't allow your situation to define you. God is the one who defines you. And so I got, I had to get before God because I had a lot of stuff I had to unravel myself from, you know, my psyche. And God would tell me, Marsha, I love you. You're beautiful. You're fearfully, you're wonderfully made. You know, you're wonderfully made, you know, and this is who you are. No, no, no. You know, don't look towards them to affirm you. Don't. So early on, <laughs> early on, I mean, I had to learn, God said, I validate you. Because here I was, this like, you know, I was like kind of like just out there. So I, I had to, you know, like, okay, I didn't know what, I don't know anything about church. I didn't know anything. And so I was so confused trying to figure it all out. And there were just so many voices. It just made me more confused. And I was like, okay, I know you didn't bring me here to have me lost. So God's like, no, I validate you. I affirm you. So I go to God. It's like, God, you know, am I pleasing you? Is this what you want me to do? Is this what you have prepared for me? So I go to him. I get affirmation, affirmation, validation so that you can stay anchored. Now, it's a work. It's not always easy because there's pressure. There's pressure. But going to him on a regular basis empowers you to offset the pressure. Now, I'm just doing a whole lot, lot of talking right now, but I want to let y'all know, okay, as barrier breaker, breaking women, you're the barrier breaker in your bloodline, your community, your group of friends. You break those barriers within your bloodline, within your soul, the self-limiting thoughts you might have. Break those barriers because the spirit of the Lord Jesus says it was upon him. He sent, he was sent to preach the good news, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to those who are blind, to set at liberty to those who are bruised. Okay, that you're no longer limited by your bruises. Oh my God. Come on, you are not your past. I don't care how, how recent your past was this morning, last night. You're not your past. Let God speak something into you today. Let God speak something into your heart today. He loves you. He sees you. He gets you. He desires you. He has use for you. As long as there's breath in your body, he still has something for you to do. Stop giving up on yourself, barrier breaker. Break some barriers. Don't despise the barriers he's giving you to break right now this season. Right now, it's like, well, I'm rocking this baby. Well, you're breaking a barrier right there. You're a mom who's rocking the baby with well, some who aren't caring about their children. Break the barrier. Break the cycle. Okay, break those cycles. You sometimes look at other people, focus on yourself, the season that you're in, the time that God has given you. There's some things that He's calling you to do at the level you are, the season you are in, the age you are in. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Somebody say, I am a barrier breaker. Barrier breaker. Barrier breaker. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, if you joined us after the offering and this word is blessing you, has helped you pray and consider about giving a seed, giving an offering, you can go to rdci.info forward slash give, or you can text rdci to 844-624-1200 or mail it into our PO Box 21672. Columbia, South Carolina, 29221. I'll drop it off at our offices, right? 1234 St. Andrews Road, if this word is ministering to you. 
Praise God. And if you're here and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to join the family of God. Come on in. Pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Father God, I recognize that I need Jesus as my Savior. Right now, I receive him, your son, the one you sent to die on the cross for my sins. He shed his blood for my sins. I receive him in my life. Thank you, Lord God, for Jesus as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Just like that, you're the family of God. Come on in. Go to rdci.info forward slash next steps. Give us information and uh, we'll mail some stuff out to you. That's right. I put it in the comment box. I am a barrier breaker. Amen. That's right. That's right. A repair breach for your family. That's it. That's it. That's it. And many of us, you don't even realize that's that's an assignment many of us have. It's making a decision and don't despise the, the, the magnitude of it. it. It starts off by doing it different, being different, just being different. You're repairing that breach. There's a, there's a calling on the families. God calls the families. I think I read read that scripture last week and is and he speaks it to families he calls us by families by tribes by nations and he speaks over the bloodline that's why sometimes you can look at a family and you see a thread of certain talents gifts and ability in the family because he speaks those into the bloodline and then satan comes in and bruises that's what he does and he and tears down and divides and and creates gaps and separation. And so God calls the solitaire, which which are many of us, into that family. And he's like, okay, prepare that breach. You're like, but how? Just start off by just being who God called you to be, letting your light shine, setting the standard, right? Raising the standard, letting the, your family know that you have a standard. You're breaking the barrier. You're repairing the breach. Just that simple. You start there. And as you walk that out, he'll give you more instructions. Sometimes we think it, we go to fix everything. You can't, you can't, they'll wear you out. And many of us are worn out trying to solve all of our family problems. But sometimes it's just by representing and just by demonstrating. It's just by modeling. Oh, please sit a minute. I lost one of my dearest friends. It's hard when you're in another country alone. It's been hard to hear of her death. Father, I just lift up Tia's friend who, um, in her family, I lift up, um, I lift up Tia. She lost one of her friends. I thank you, Lord God, that she finds peace and comfort. And I thank you, Lord God, for the family of her friend, that you strengthen her family and you keep their family. And they find peace in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen, this was good. I enjoyed my time with y'all today. Amen. I enjoyed my time. We're coming together tonight as women. We're in our loungewear. We're going to be all comfy. And uh, we're going to be setting the atmosphere so we can just be relaxed. And um, we're going to deal with stress and and make sure um, that we're managing our lives and our perspectives is right. And um, we started off, it was a great message on Wednesday. If you did not get it, if you weren't, then watch it yet. Or what, go back and take a look at Wednesday, Wednesday noon, Wednesday evening Bible study, Overcoming Stress. It was so good. Um, we had Stress Awareness Month this month at Right Direction Church International. Um, this whole month of April is, is mental health stress awareness, and we are dealing with the stress. We are becoming aware of it, and we're going to combat it, and we're not going to allow it to drive us. Amen. Listen, y'all are awesome. Enjoy your Friday. I will see some of you on tonight. Love y'all. Be blessed.